What's up guys? So I got this plastic shredder from P Precious Plastics recently. I actually ordered it months ago and it finally came in. So I got this table saw here. I got some wood. You know what that means. Let's put it together. Let's make a little table for this plastic shredder. So I didn't want to do anything complex. I wanted to really make it minimal. Uh, you know, basic, just a basic table with a hole in it so the shredder can drop the plastics down as well as having a little tray that can catch or, or a tray for the actual container to catch the plastics on. So I just cut up all this wood. I actually lost the footage of me cutting out all this wood. I recorded me cutting all of it on the table saw as well as all of it kicking back on me. And, and slapping me in the face, but for some reason the footage literally isn't on my camera anymore. So how convenient, right? And yes, I'm barefoot. That's just what I prefer to do. Unless I'm in a serious work environment, then yeah, sure, I'll throw in some steel toes. But other than that, being barefoot is just how I really rock. So if you got a problem with that, suck my balls. So this table isn't really going to be that wide. It doesn't need to be. And this is also going to go in the, the pyrolysis greenhouse as it is, right? So I want to really be as space efficient as possible. So I'm only going to make it as wide as I'd say it really needs to be. As well as, you know, having some room for other things on this table too. Because I know I'm not just going to ever have the plastic shredder on here. So you see this, how it's looking now. And I'm just going to go ahead and mount all these boards on the top here. And... These are actually going to be where everything rests on top of. Those other boards were just mainly for a frame and support. And this is how it turned out. As you see, it looks really good. In my opinion, at least. So this hole here is for the plastic shredder, as I said before. So that way, when we shred up the plastics, they'll fall down. And they'll go into that tray underneath there. Which will have a container to collect the plastic. Pretty self-explanatory, right? So it looks good. So I also put this gearbox on there because both of these things are really the main things that would need to be mounted. So I need to kind of get a scope of everything that would go around those. So you see, I mounted everything on here, just a little dry test fit as well as the motor. And I say it looks pretty good. I added this start and stop switch, which by the way, it kind of, I don't know if it broke or what, but like I used it a couple times and it just stopped working. So I don't know what, what I need to do. Like, I don't know if it has a little fuse in it I need to replace. But yeah, it, it stopped working. So other than that, you know, you could see that this machine from the P Precious Plastics website, it actually, um, it came with a little bit of incomplete parts. To, well, not necessarily incomplete, but like kind of like the wrong part at the wrong time. So first of all, the shaft had no keyway on it so i had to make that makeshift kind of coupling there but also these hoppers uh well the hoppers they came with the wrong size or something because you see i have those two screwed in there like they're supposed to be and then this one just does not line up with these holes no matter what so that's a, you know that doesn't work and then on top of that, instead of getting another piece like that, I got three pieces of the type that are supposed to be mounted to the, the shredder when there's only supposed to be two of those. As you see, it doesn't look bad. It still works as a hopper, but I need to weld it on. So that's what we're going to do. So after it's all welded, you can see it looks pretty good. There is some a little bit of a lip on both sides, but overall I think it's good. So now it's time to move this table. And you know what, guys? I will let you know. Despite this being just a, little, a couple pieces of wood, this table is actually quite heavy. Um, I would say it, it probably is close to 100 pounds or so. So I really had to 
to, to you know get my squat game in to pick this table up you know what I'm saying like like I'm at the gym or something so got it in the pyrolysis lab and I want to go over with you guys the specifics so as you see this is the gearbox and it's a 50 to 1 gearbox what does that mean it means that that'll reduce the, the speed by 50 times so as you see here the motor is rated at 3450 rpm and we're going to divide that by 50 to get the rpm after the gearbox and as you see that ends up being 69 and we also will put that 69 into this torque calculator and it lets us know we make 309 newton meters of force from this but i will let you guys know that this is half of that and that's because i'm running this thing which can run on 120 and 220 voltage i'm running this on 115 or 120 because i don't currently have a 220 plug anywhere so this is only half as powerful as it can be but now you see the shredders are part of the family with the reactor in there. So we turn it on and you can see it, it is moving a little bit. I guess I could bolt it to the table a little bit better, but I think it looks pretty good and it's working. So it goes through these plastic bags like nothing. I want to see this little mango bag here. There's like a food container, right? And there's a like they call these multi-layer packaging. But you know what's odd? This thing must have been protected by the mango gods and spirits because it would not shred. I'm telling you now, I put this thing in there in all the different angles and it just was like hovering above it. So we're going to get back to that later or something. Um, there's just a little uh, PET little, like Reese's cup packaging. I don't know what the heck this stuff is, but mask. I wanted to see how that works because... You know what? Tons of mask waste. So the, it works pretty well too. It was kind of hovering on top of the blades like the, the mango was for a second too. So this thing really seems to do bags the best because it can really get a good grip on the bag instead of having it just hover on top. Let's see how bubble wrap works. Nope, oh, really good. So yeah, anything that those blades can grab onto, it's going to destroy them. And you can see I'm getting good flakes from under here. I will say I do want to build like another chute because this thing is kind of spilling microplastics around the vicinity and that's unacceptable to me. So there's another little PET plant potter thing. And you see, even though it doesn't stall the blades or anything, it does run into the same issue of kind of like levitating above the blade instead of being grabbed by them so that's a kind of a big issue and i know that they make like two shaft two axle um two axle shredders that can solve that problem but if you guys know anything i can do to fix that with this maybe i need to lower the rpm or higher it just let me know because you know as you see another pet little uh food container here same thing and it's it is kind of annoying because it's like it would easily be continuous, you know, it's not a matter of horsepower, it's just that these things just keep riding the blades instead of being destroyed by them. So eventually I did get that thing to go through though, in the end, with enough agitation. Just put a little piece of styrofoam in there, because I wanted to see if it was so light that it would just ride them too. But with some more PET. The main purpose of me getting this plastic was really to um to, to shred PET. I put a piece of ABS in there, or at least I think that's what it was, uh, or maybe it could have been PVC. I wanted to try this mango crap again, and guess what? It still didn't work. <laughs> what the heck? I also put some of my gloves in there that I um, use for the chemistry stuff just to see how it would work. And yeah, overall, I can't wait to put this stuff in the reactor because this is really nice. 
Now, something I do want to ask you guys, I have a question. So, I have this box over here that's hooked up to this air conditioner, right? And this is a 220 port. So, my question is, can I take this and can I splice this and then make my own little 220 wall socket right there that I can plug the motor into so it's at, working at its full power? Let me guys, let, let me know. And I do also want to show you guys, before I go, the distiller. I've changed a lot up on it. I've made the column a lot bigger. I've made it more like a two-neck flask, as you see. So the feed port is its own port now. And overall, this may work a lot better. I also got a low-pressure burner. I was using a high-pressure burner before. So we'll see how that looks in the next episode of the distillation project. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. And take care, guys. Mm -hmm.